The world mourns the death of Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom, which has once again highlighted the scars of British colonialism along with the associated organized looting of hundreds of nations that have been dragged decades and millennia back in humanity's long march to freedom and wealth. In the wake of her demise, the crown jewels have become a hot subject on Twitter, particularly the matter of the Koh-i-Noor, which quickly became a trending topic. The Koh-i-Noor, whose name translates to Mountain of Light, was most likely unearthed in South India in the 13th century and had an original weight of roughly 186 carats. The stone was reportedly discovered in the Golconda mines in central southern India before being ceded to the British monarchy in 1849, according to the website of the UK's royal palaces. In 1849, the East India Company captured the Kohinoor from deposed 11-year-old Emperor Maharaja Dilip Singh. The Kohinoor gained a reputation among the British royal family for bringing bad luck to any man who wears it because of its conflict-filled past amongst men. Queen Victoria wore it at first as a brooch, after which it was placed in the crowns of Queen Alexandra and Queen Mary. It is currently mounted in the crown made for Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, in preparation for her 1937 coronation as Queen Consort. At the 1953 coronation of her daughter, Queen Elizabeth II, she wore it yet again. According to reports, Camilla, the Queen Consort, would wear it for King Charles III's coronation although is on public exhibit in the Jewel House at the Tower of London. In an interview last year, former Deputy Prime Minister of the United Kingdom Nick Cleggs stated the UK will keep hold to the disputed diamond and future monarchs will do same. There is no doubt in, in our mind that the diamond was relocated to this country under legal conditions, which are not in any doubt. But there is, I think, clarity in the sincerity with which the Queen holds the crown jewels, all of them, in trust on behalf of the nation, has done for many generations and future monarchs will continue to do so. The diamond has been the subject of legal and political controversy in India due to disagreements over who is the rightful owner, with claims coming from both Pakistan and India. But not only did the British loot expensive items from India alone, but they plundered historic relics and cultural artifacts of intangible heritage of nations within Africa, all the way to Greece. Many contend that the monarchy is the only relic of the ancient empire in a contemporary democratic Britain and that the empire's emphasis on looting is what led to the poverty of its colonies. Hence people in India, Africa, and a host of nations across the globe believe that given the history of British colonialism, the capture of these jewels and artifacts is fraught with controversy and demand that the royal family restore to their original owners the artifacts acquired by the British Empire. Thousands of cultural artifacts were pillaged while Africa was under colonial authority. Today, major museums in Europe have agreed to loan some of these artifacts back to African nations which want them returned and France has published a report urging the return to Africa, the wealth of works of African art that are currently housed in French museums. So from the prestigious great star of Africa to the elaborately sculptured Benin bronzes, our video today presents the seven African treasures looted by the colonial empires. Be sure to leave a comment, like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting future videos. A wooden carving from Cameroon, the 32-inch tall Bangwa queen symbolizes the strength and well-being of the Bangwa people. It is one of the most well-known works of African art in the world and wields enormous sacred significance for the people of Cameroon. In the Bangwa realm of the modern-day Lebiolum district of Cameroon's southwest region, sculptures of titled royal wives or princesses were known as Bangwa queens. Before the region was colonized, the Bangwa Queen was allegedly offered to or looted by the German colonial agent Gustav Kamrau in the early 1899s. It eventually wound up in Berlin's museum Far, Folke Kondor, before being purchased by an art buyer in 1926. The carving was purchased by American art collector Harry A. Franklin for $29,000 in 1966, and following his passing, 
it fetched $3.4 million at a Sotheby's auction. The Queen of Bangwo was also depicted by surrealist portrait artist Man Ray in a 1937 portrait of a nude model, which the New York Times claims is one of his most well-known works. The Bangwa Queen sculpture was on exhibit at the Musée Dapper until 2017, when the museum that specialized in African art closed due to low attendance and hefty maintenance expenses. It is now owned by the Dapper Foundation in Paris, France. Traditional Bangwa chiefs have been contacting the foundation to ask for its repatriation to Cameroon. French historian Benedict Savoy and Senegalese writer and economist Felwine Saar are the authors of the research that President Macron commissioned. They have suggested that French law be amended to permit the return of African art. They appear on Zimbabwe's national flag, currency, and official documents, stone statues of birds that European colonizers took from the country more than a century ago. The eight original sculptures have enormous spiritual significance for the inhabitants of the southern African nation and have been adopted as emblems. Six of the massive carvings were taken from Great Zimbabwe Ruins, an impressive stone complex that was said to have been constructed by pre-colonial King Wunhu Mutapa during the 11th and 13th centuries. Almost all of the looted treasured green and gray soapstone birds have now been restored to the country. Only one remains, and it is housed in the home of Cecil Rhodes, a 19th century British mining tycoon and imperialist. In 1906, he took many birds from Great Zimbabwe to South Africa. Four of them were given back in 1981, the year that followed Zimbabwe's independence. At the end of the 19th century, two ferocious lions from Kenya's Sava region attacked and killed railway employees on the British Kenya and Ganda Line. In 1898, laborers spent nine months constructing the railway route between Mombasa and Lake Victoria. Lieutenant Colonel John Patterson, the British engineer in charge of the railway project, eventually shot the two murderous creatures dead. The Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, Illinois, purchased the stuffed lions from Patterson in 1925 and added them to the museum's permanent collection. The Field Museum claims that following examination by its scientists, Lieutenant Colonel Patterson's estimate of 135 railroad workers and black Africans killed by the lions' feeding frenzy was substantially lowered to 35. Presently, the Kenya National Museum wants the lions back in Kenya. A royal bridal gown and a gold crown from the 18th century that were stolen from Ethiopia, formerly known as Abyssinia, by the British troops in 1868 are among the treasures at Magdala. According to historians, the entire plunder from Magdala, the northern citadel capital of Emperor Tuatros II, required the use of 15 elephants and 200 mules. When relations between the two countries deteriorated, the British attacked Magdala in retaliation for the detention of their consul. The royal wedding gown and crown, which are valued for their silver and copper filigree decorations and religious images imprinted, are important representations of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The crown, together with a solid gold chalice, is thought to have been commissioned in the 1740s by Empress Mentuwa and her son King Aidasu, and presented as a gift to a church in Gondar. Queen Moisaro Tarunish, the widow of Emperor Tuatros II, owned the clothing and jewelry. The antiquities were sought back by Ethiopia in 2007, and the UK's Victoria and Albert Museum made an offer to lend the artifacts to Ethiopia in April 2018. While Indians demand the restitution of the Kohinoor, Egyptians seek the Rosetta Stone, which is presently on exhibit at the British Museum. The enigmatic hieroglyphic writing system of ancient Egypt has been deciphered thanks to the granodiorite steel, Rosetta Stone, 
making it arguably the most well-known rock on the entire planet. According to legend, a French military officer discovered the Rosetta Stone in Memphis, Egypt in 1799 before it was taken by British forces in Alexandria and sent to England two years later. The British Museum received a seal that allowed hieroglyphs to be deciphered in 1802. The stone has been on exhibit at the museum ever since then, with just one interruption during World War I in 1917, when the museum relocated critical objects to avoid damage from heavy bombing in London. Now, Egyptian archaeologist Zahi Hawass has launched a campaign to reclaim the relic, saying that the Rosetta Stone is the icon of the Egyptian identity. The British Museum has no right to show this artifact to the public, adding that they left Egypt completely illegally and they should come back. The exquisitely crafted sculptures and plaques known as the Benin Bronzes, which are actually made of brass, graced the royal palace of Ovan Ramwin Na Basi, who was the Oba of the Kingdom of Benin, which was later annexed into Nigeria under British administration. They were carved out of wood, ceramic, brass, ivory, and ceramics for the ancestral altars of former kings and queen mothers. In 1897, in retaliation for an assault on a British diplomatic mission, the British conducted a punitive expedition against Benin. Numerous royal artifacts, in addition to bronze statues and plaques, were removed as a result of the operation and are now dispersed all over the world. According to the British Museum in London, many of the artifacts in its collection from Benin were given to it in 1898 by the Foreign Office and the Lords Commissioners of the Admiralty. Nigerians have been requesting that the figurines be returned to them since they are a window into the African art of the time, and it is simply wrong that people must travel to London to see them. Top European museums agreed in October to loan important artifacts back to Nigeria for the new Royal Museum, which is set to open in 2021. Many South Africans are advocating for the repatriation of the Great Star of Africa, amid growing calls from India to have its symbolic and mostly renowned Koh-i-Noor diamond returned to India. The Great Star of Africa, also known as the Cullinan One, is the largest stone cut from a Cullinan diamond and also the largest gem-quality uncut diamond ever found. It was discovered in South Africa in 1905 in a mine owned by its namesake, Thomas Cullinan. Presently, the Great Star of Africa is affixed to the sovereign scepter with the cross. These gems have been seen adorned by Queen Elizabeth II in various portraits. The Cullinan Diamond was delivered to King Edward VII, the British king at the time, according to the Royal Collection Trust, which is in charge of the British royal family's royal collection, in 1907 two years after it was found at a private mine in South Africa's former Transvaal region. Many South Africans, though, disagree with this story. Evaristo Benyera, a professor of African politics at the University of South Africa, told CNN that the whole Transvaal and Union of South Africa governments as well as the associated mining syndicates were illegitimate and that receiving a diamond that was stolen does not absolve the recipient. Also, a local newspaper cited activist, Dendak Solo Sabello, as saying, the Cullinan diamond must be returned to South Africa with immediate effect. The minerals of our country and other countries continue to benefit Britain at the expense of our people. Meanwhile, a petition calling for the restoration of the Great Star of Africa and its display in a South African museum has amassed 6,000 signatures and is currently being circulated. That sums up our video for today. If you enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen which looks into seven shocking scandals that occurred under Queen Elizabeth II's reign. Be sure to leave a comment, give the video a like, and subscribe for more insightful future videos.